Hi YouTube, this is Jeff at Dark Moon Metals, and today I want to talk to you about an extremely common task you'll be needing to do if you're getting involved with metal fabrication, and that's simply drilling a hole in metal. Now, a lot of people have access to a cordless drill or an electric drill, but if you're doing precise work where you need to get bolt holes to really line up, um, you don't want to use something like this. If this is all you have, you know, you got to work with what you've got. But if you're planning on doing metal fabrication professionally and you're going to offer your services to other people, you're going to want to upgrade to a drill press. Now, if you do that, there are two basic models of drill press that are out there. Uh, the first one is a bench model. And as the name would imply, it sits right on your workbench. It takes up very little room. In fact, when I'm not using it, I can shove it right under my workbench and keep it out of my way. Um, the only limitations with something like this is you're limited to the size of material or the size of part you can put underneath it. Um, you only have so much room between the table and the chuck. Now, the bigger option is the floor model. Now, this one has a much bigger capacity than my little one on my bench. It also has more speed options, and I'll get into that in just a moment. So you decided you want to get a drill press. Cool. What do you need to consider while you're buying it? Well, obviously cost is one thing, but I bet you wouldn't have considered how fast does it go. Now, most drill presses today have a system of pulleys and belts inside of them that determine their speed capabilities. A lot of us have used cordless drills, we've used electric drills, and we all know what variable speed means. It's just like the gas pedal on a car. You push the trigger in lightly, you get slow and very low RPMs. You floor it, you pull it back all the way, and you get the maximum capability of your tool, the fastest RPMs possible. In a drill press, it's not like that. Once you've set your speed, that's the speed you have from the second you turn the switch on to the second you turn it off. Now, under this cover are those belts and pulleys I was talking about. This particular model has the capability of going as slow as 250 revolutions per minute all the way on up to 3100 revolutions per minute. Now, like I said before, the bigger models typically have a greater range of speed as opposed to the benchtop models. My benchtop model can go as high as 3100 revolutions per minute, but it can only go as slow as 620. And while that might not sound like much, it's significant if you're drilling through thick pieces of steel. Not that you'd want to be drilling thick pieces of steel on a benchtop model drill press anyway. The piece on the drill pitch you're going to be working with the most, other than the on-off switch, is the chuck. The chuck is the fixture which holds the drill bit in place. Now I happen to have a spare one here that's outside the machine. And along with the chuck, you have a tool called the chuck key. Now this drill bit is in this securely. This is tightened. And I can't break this apart by hand. I can't turn this. What the chuck key is is actually a specialized wrench that fits inside the chuck and it gives you the extra leverage to either loosen or tighten the drill bit and that allows it to be held securely inside of the chuck. Now, when you're shopping for a drill press, the other thing you're going to need to consider, especially if you're uh, buying drill bits, is how big of a hole do you need to drill? Now, this is an average size drill bit, but drill bits come in all shapes and sizes, and they can get really big. Um, this is actually not even the biggest one I've seen. This is a decent sized drill bit here. Um, this is an oddball size, this is a uh, 49 60 fourths. But the problem with this bit is, is it will not fit inside of my chuck. The, the shank is just way too big. Now, you can do one of two things. You can get a second chuck that has a bigger opening to allow for the shank, or you can get a different kind of drill bit. This guy right here, it has the same diameter as far as the drill, but the shank is about 50% less in diameter, and that will fit inside of my chuck. So that's another thing to consider when you're buying a drill press. Um, is your current set of drills going to fit inside the chuck? Now, you can't take a big guy like this and put it onto a bench model machine unless it's a really heavy duty bench model. Typically, you'll only find big chucks like this in the floor models. So once again, that goes back to what I said about the floor model being more versatile. What I have here is a piece of stainless steel. And for the purposes of the video, I simply want to drill a hole through it. 
I made a small mark with a pencil where I want the center of my hole to be. The first step is to take a punch, which is a standard punch. Uh, basically what it does is it allows you to use it in conjunction with a hammer with a single strike to make a divot in the metal. Now that divot in the metal, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it on this camera, uh, that divot in the metal, there you go, will allow the center of the drill bit to catch and it will hold the drill bit from wobbling as you're applying pressure to it. If you're working with a piece of material that you can get a decent grip on, all you really need to do is put a piece of wood underneath the metal so as the drill bit comes through, it goes into something soft and it doesn't damage the end of the drill bit or drill into your drill table. But I want to drill this guy, so I can't really just kind of set it down. I would only be grabbing it by my fingers. Well, one of the things I've seen people do on YouTube is take a pair of pliers and hold it on another piece of wood with a pair of pliers. Well, it's safer than holding it in your hand, that's true, but there is a right way to do it. This is a vise specifically designed for use in a drill press. And all you do is you drop your piece in, secure it, and that gives you a nice stable platform to drill your hole. I know for a lot of people it's not realistic to go out and buy a whole bunch of tools, especially if you're just trying to figure out whether you like the hobby or not. Now a drill press, you can get a simple drill press in some stores for 99 bucks. Um, granted you get what you pay for, but it's still a drill press. Now drill press vices can be somewhat of a high dollar item for what they are. Um, you're only really going to be able to use it with your drill press. It's not like a multifunction tool. But what I have here is an alternative. Now, I have my piece of steel and I need to drill it. Well, this isn't a vise, but what it is, is a jig. And I can put this piece of metal in between these nails and it'll hold it in such a way where if the drill bit were to grab it, it won't start spinning, it won't cut my hand, and it will secure my work. It's not the ideal solution, but it's a solution nonetheless. Uh, the one thing that you're going to have to be aware of is, yeah, you have yourself a nice jig for now, but once you use it and it gets in, uh, infiltrated with oil, you're going to want to replace it. Um, but other than that, it's a great way to uh, get by without having a vice. And hey, if you can use this to get your job done, go ahead and use it. There's no shame in it. Besides, you know, what you're really going to be evaluated on is your end product, not necessarily on how you make it. You make something that's of high quality, it looks good, it may take you a little extra time, you may have to troubleshoot and come up with things like this, but this is part of the rewards of owning your own business. You solve problems, you work around things, you learn how to work without things, and you always, always do your best to make sure you can get your job done. And this is just another example of that. Now what I've gone ahead and done is I've drilled a little bit of a starter hole, just a little bit of a divot in the plate. Now, I'm going to come in with a little bit of cutting oil, and that gives the oil a little reservoir to sit in. I'm going to come down and I'm going to finish drilling my hole. Now you see a little bit of smoke there, that's not a lot to worry about. However, what you might notice is that all the oil is gone. Well, when that happens, just put another drop or two in and keep on going. And when you go all the way through, move the drill bit up and down a little bit. It helps get rid of some of the burrs. And there you have it, there's your hole. One of the common problems that people have in the metal shop is drilling two consecutive holes in two different pieces of material and they have to line up perfectly. Well, a lot of people will take their punch and they'll sit and try to figure out where the center of their hole is and hope they get it close. There is a more precise method. This is a set of transfer punches. 
And what they are, are punches, and each one is a different diameter. You find the diameter punch that matches your existing hole, and it fits snugly in that hole. And what that does is it puts your center punch exactly in the center of the hole to drill your next piece. Very important. Uh, it's a great little set, nice uh, set of tools to have. Transfer punches are not that expensive, and once again, I'd highly recommend them to anyone who's thinking about starting up a metal shop. All right, quick recap. The four things you need to make sure of you do to drill your hole. The first, use a punch to mark the center of your hole so your drill bit does not wobble in your workpiece. Second, make sure your speed is appropriate for your material. If you're using a soft metal, you can use a higher revolution per minute. If you're using a steel or a stainless steel, you want lower RPMs. Third thing you want to remember is make sure that you have your workpiece secured, whether it's in a vise or a custom-made jig. And a homemade jig is more than acceptable, especially if it helps keep you safe. Fourth, you want to make sure that you're using some type of cutting oil when and where it's needed. Follow those steps and you will have good quality parts and you will have a good quality product. Now, speaking of good quality, I wanted to touch base on something real quick and it involves the transfer punches that I showed you. Now, these transfer punches that I have, this set was not made in the United States. Um, usually that means that the tool steel isn't the same quality that you would find from something made in this country. I know people think it's a horrible stereotype, but in this instance, it is true. Um, American quality steel is usually 10 times better than anything else that's out there. So if you do get a set of these and you don't buy an expensive set, you get a set that's made in uh, another country overseas, I want to offer you a little bit of a suggestion. Take your transfer punch, put it in your hole, and just hit it hard enough to transfer a mark to the material. Once you have your mark and you have your center established, go in with a good quality punch made in the US, good tool steel, and set your final mark. Um, it will help preserve these transfer punches for, uh, for a lot longer. And you don't go out and buy one transfer punch at a time, they usually come in sets. Uh, this set right here goes from, let's see, it goes from 3.30 seconds all the way on up to 17.30 seconds. And if you want a bigger set, this guy goes all the way from, let's see, 17.30 seconds up to 7 eighths. So, like I said, Use your tools, make sure you understand how to use them. When you get your drill press, or if you already have one, take the time to read the owner's manual. There may be a little tip or a trick to make it easier to setting your belts, setting your pulleys, you know, things like that. And always, I know it says it in every manual that comes in every piece of power equipment, make sure you wear your safety glasses. You only have one pair of eyes, and you need those to continue to watch my videos. So. Until the next video, take care. This is Jeff at Darkling Metals. Thanks for watching. Comment. I'll get back to you soon.